Hey everyone, welcome to part 31 of basic training. Today we're going to cover everything you need to know to play Grumble Volcano on 150cc. This is one of those rare courses where even the easier version of the run is still pretty challenging, so without further ado, let's get into the guide. We are once again going to be using our tried and true try hard build for this track. After getting the rocket boost at the start, trick off the ramp and then quickly press right on the joystick while in mid-air. This will cause you to angle yourself slightly to the right so that you can grab the second coin from the right here. After that, we're going to build a mini turbo around this left turn and follow it up with a super mini turbo around the right turn. Now we don't want to release this super mini turbo right away. Delay the release just a bit because what we're going to do is trick off the ramp here and we want our super mini turbo to run out right around the time that we get the boost from the trick. This is because when your super mini turbo runs out, you'll drop back down to your normal top speed and if you trick after that, then part of the trick boost will be spent just getting back up to top speed before you actually get the boost. This is an example of mini turbo chaining, and it's something that we're going to be paying a lot of attention to on this track, for example, in the next series of turns coming up. After tricking, we're going to land in a right drift, and then build up a couple mini turbos around these first two turns. Then around this long right turn, we're going to build up an ultra mini turbo and quickly start a left drift. The goal here is to build up a super mini turbo around the left turn, but we want to chain this with the ultra mini turbo that we just built by releasing as soon as that boost runs out. After that, we're going to chain one more mini turbo before the glider ramp. Now honestly this is a lot easier said than done. In order to build up that first ultra mini turbo, you need to be close to the right hand side of the track when you start that right drift, and your soft drifting needs to be on point. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I suggest that you watch my drifting video because the explanation is kind of long winded. But basically, a soft drift is when you do a drift at an angle that's slightly above or below the horizontal. If you think of your joystick like a clock face, this corresponds to an angle that's anywhere between about a 2 and a 4 for right drifts, or an 8 and a 10 for left drifts. Let's make this a little bit more clear by taking a look at how this sequence of turns is supposed to look with an input display on the screen. For this turn in particular, you basically need a soft drift perfectly if you want to build up the ultra mini turbo quickly. Because if you take too long to build up that ultra mini turbo, then what's going to happen is you're going to take the left turn super wide. If you're having trouble with that first ultra mini turbo, then just build up a super mini turbo instead, because it's way more important that you take a good line around that left turn than it is that you get the ultra mini turbo around the right turn. Now that's probably one of the harder strats to learn on this track, and yes I'm including the awful shortcut that we're going to cover later on in the run, but we're not out of the woods yet. After chaining the ultra mini turbo into super mini turbo into mini turbo, trick off the ramp and then trick off the glider, making sure to hold down the trick button so that your glider comes out lower. Now what we want to do here is glide straight towards the orange boost ramp and then just before we get to it, start holding left on the joystick and then land in a right drift. When you land, you'll hit the orange boost ramp and after you go off it, start holding down a hard right in midair to start charging your mini turbo and then when you land, hold left a little bit to avoid the off road. Once you pass the second tree, mushroom into the off road and pay attention to this little bit of track right here. You might notice there's this little angled bit here. What we're actually going to do is stay as close to the edge of the track as possible while moving toward that little angled bit of track. If you did everything right so far, then just before you get to this tree on the left, you're going to have an ultra mini turbo built up, and you can use its momentum to hop clear over the lava and down into the other part of the track. Honestly, it looks a lot harder than it is, but the good news is that if it's giving you issues, there is an easier way to take this shortcut. Rather than do all that funky glider into orange boost ramp stuff that we did before, what we can do is just land from the glider onto the lower part of the track, and then start a right drift, mushroom through the off-road like before, and instead, build up a super mini turbo to hop over the lava. I highly recommend learning at least one version of this shortcut, because unfortunately there's really not any other spots where you can use your mushrooms to cut a decent bit of off-road. Again, at least until lap 3, but don't worry, we're almost there. All that's left to do is build up a mini turbo around the next left turn, grab a coin if you're still missing any, and then start a right drift before tricking off the next ramp. Couple things about this, you're not really trying to build up a mini turbo here, you're just doing that right drift for alignment purposes only. You want to be towards the left hand side of the ramp here so that you can get a good angle around the last right turn of the lap. And with that, we are done with lap 1. I didn't really mention coins much, but you're basically just taking tight lines and grabbing all the coins you can. Ideally, you should have 10 by the time you start lap 2, but if you're missing any, you can always grab another one from the coin line at the start of the lap. Other than that though, the track plays exactly the same on all three laps. Except for the shortcut that I have not so subtly foreshadowed. You might have noticed that the track is kind of breaking apart the longer the run goes on, and on lap 3, the track is a lot narrower than on laps 1 or 2. 
One really important change is that on laps 1 and 2, there's this random bit of off-road that kind of looks like a ramp, except that if you try and take it, you'll run face first into this big ass rock here. On lap 3, the rock is gone, and we can actually do this. I promise that with a consistent setup, it's a lot less terrible than it looks, and I'm going to do my best to teach you the setup that I use right now. It all starts with the mushroom cut, which we're going to do exactly like before. Step one is that once you get to the narrow part of the track, start a wide left drift. Hang out close to the edge of the off-road on your left, but do not spend a lot of time tightening your drift angle. This is because what we're going to do in step two is build up a mini turbo and do a right hop, making sure to time that hop so that we land on the track, i.e. not in the off-road. Make sure that your cart is angled in such a way that you're pointing towards the vertex of this little V-shape right here. Step three is to do a neutral hop as soon as you land from the hop in step two. This is why it's important to not be in the off-road when you land from the first hop, because the neutral hop needs to happen before you get to the off-road. If you did everything right, then you'll fly clean over the off-road and up onto that vertex that we talked about before. At which point, all you have to do in step four is trick off the ramp, which should allow you to jump clean over the lava and back onto the track below. At that point, land in a right drift and do a mini turbo trick off the ramp to finish up the run. So let's quickly recap the steps here. The way the shortcut works is to do the mushroom cut just like on laps one and two, and then do a wide left drift when you get to the narrow part of the track. Then the inputs are basically just right hop into neutral hop into trick. The most common mistake you'll probably make is tightening your drift too much before getting to the shortcut. There's like 30 different things that can happen after that, but the long and short of it is that the shortcut won't work. Again, the visual cue that I use is the middle of that little V-shape in the ramp. Now it's a bit unfortunate that this shortcut only opens up at the end of the track because that means it's not something you're going to be able to get a lot of practice with. But if you do want to just get some kind of run together, then just play the track exactly how we did on laps 1 and 2. Note that you can just avoid the mushroom cut that we've been doing all along and then mushroom up this ramp at the end. As far as I can tell, there's basically no difference time-wise between the two strats, so just do whatever is easier for you. Now those are all the strats, but before checking out a full run, let's talk a bit about the world record. They use Baby Daisy in place of Waluigi for the added mini turbo, but surprisingly, the strats actually aren't all that different from the Waluigi strats. But there are a couple of major differences in strategy between the current world record and my own run. The first takes advantage of the baby build to do a super mini turbo into motion glider off the glider ramp, which is admittedly pretty obnoxious, but not nearly as obnoxious as what they do at the end of laps one and two. We took the turn from a pretty wide line so that we can get a good angle around it. But what the world record does is mini turbo trick off the ramp and then use the momentum to drift over the off-road. Trust me when I say this is much harder than it looks. And even though it's possible with Waluigi, I've never even come close to getting this down once. But that's it for the strats. Let's talk about the track a bit more while checking out a full replay of my current personal best. By the way, if you found the video helpful so far, please don't forget to drop a like and a comment to let me know since this is by far the best way to help the video get spread to other people. Now, Grumble Volcano. Honestly, this is a really fun course to play casually because it's one of those courses that really separates the wheat from the chaff. There's a lot of advanced strats that you can learn, and while most of them don't save a substantial amount of time by themselves, put together they can really put some distance between you and your opponents. That being said, I'm just going to be honest, time trialing this track is kind of a nightmare, especially if you're grinding for a top time. There's a few reasons for this. First of all, a lot of the strats that I covered, like the Cave Ultra Mini Turbo, the Mini Turbo Chaining, and the Mushroom strats, are pretty tricky to learn, and even more tricky to string together in quick succession. And if that weren't bad enough, there's a difficult to learn shortcut that only opens up literally at the very end of the run, meaning that until you do learn how to do the shortcut properly, you're basically running through an already difficult course and just praying that things happen to work out for you in the end. Now notice I did say the shortcut was difficult to learn, and not difficult to execute. That's because, like everything else in this track, once you do learn the setup for the shortcut, it's actually pretty consistent. The thing is though, it only saves about half a second or so, and chances are that you'll be able to save a lot more time by just learning how to drive the rest of the track properly. So I'd suggest putting this off until you've more or less gotten everything else down first. Oh, and by the way, don't be disheartened if you're trying to compare your times to the world record. Usually my benchmark is to get within 5 seconds of the world record, as in, differences anywhere in the 4.x range or below are what I'm usually shooting for. I did manage to get that here, but it was definitely one of the more painful courses to do that for. The funny thing is that if you look at the top 10 times, 10th place is almost a second and a half off of record, which might not sound like much, but it's one of the biggest differences in the game. 
So yeah, if it's any consolation, if you think you've got a long way to go, so does literally everyone else. And that's everything you need to know to play Grumble Volcano on 150cc. Overall, a pretty fun course to learn, and yet another one where I'm honestly pretty surprised I was able to do as well as I did. Before you leave, please don't forget to click that like button if the video helped you out, and also let me know down in the comments how you did on this track, because I do love hearing from you all. Thank you all very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next one.